Interesting game, uh, Allen. No R.J. Barrett. Knicks really struggling shooting the ball. Five of 30 from downtown. And it's tough, obviously, when you don't have R.J. and you're shooting like that. I mean, their season low in points last year was 85. And they barely did better than that tonight. Yeah, I mean, this is what you get when you put two teams together in a back-to-back home and home. And there's no day off. There's no nothing. It's play one night, fly, play the next night. And you're going to get this. And the Cavs don't have their full lineup still, but they added Karis LeVert tonight that they didn't have last night. And he was a big difference maker because Donovan Mitchell made plays late when it mattered. But Karis LeVert also made big plays, including a bunch of threes as well. So three-point shooting, a major issue for the Knicks tonight. Five of 30 from downtown. And above the break, they were two of 18. Above the break, obviously, the corners is one thing. But above the break is where you get the bulk of your threes. And they couldn't make those either. So for the Knicks, there were open shots that weren't going down. You can't talk about defense in this game. They held an opponent under 100 points for a third straight game. This is about an offense that is struggling. And also one of the star players, okay, you mentioned R.J. Barrett not here. Julius Randle continues to struggle offensively, and tonight it was his toughest night of the season. Randle, 3 of 15 from the floor, only six points. We mentioned off the top there, Donovan Mitchell had 23 points in the first half, goes 0 for his first 10 in the second half, doesn't score a single point until 235 left, but then he hits the three. As we showed you, he hit the two, and down the stretch, those were the key plays of the game. Yeah, they are, but the key plays were getting the Knicks back in this thing as they were down by as many as seven. Manuel quickly had a strong second half. One guy that did have some offense going, that runner, down five so here we go can the Knicks close it Jalen Brunson the turnaround now it's three they hit a free throw to make it two and this is the three you're talking about one of the first big shots and that's what big time players do and that's what Donovan Mitchell is he misses this one but watch the hustle again the great players they jump off the page they make the plays when it matters most the put back that felt like the big one but this was the dagger a moon ball from the corner from Karis LeVert giving a glare to Celebrity Row and the Cavs exact revenge, and they get the split in the home-and-home. Home. All right, note the shooting for the Knicks. That's really the story. The defense was good enough. 5 of 30 from downtown. Again, the struggles from the line. Only 20 of 30 from the foul line. And as we discussed, only 35% uh, shooting overall. All right, Wally Zerbiak tonight. Help call the game on the MSG Radio Network. Wally now on the court. Your impressions, Wally, of tonight's ball game. Not good. Uh, you guys <laughs> mentioned it. They did not shoot the basketball well. A lot of one on one in the second half. And this Cleveland Cavalier team was a tremendous defensive team last year. They hang their hat on that end of the floor. And the Knicks didn't do much to make them work on that defensive end. It ended up in a lot of five seconds left in a possession, one on one, trying to get a shot up. And I think the length on the perimeter really bothered the Knicks. Emmanuel quickly came in the game. He was doing a good job of bringing some pace into the basketball game in that second half. But Julius Randle just really struggling right now coming off that offseason ankle season surgery. He doesn't trust his legs right now. He got to his spots at times, dished the ball off when he normally takes the ball up strong around the basket, got a few shots blocked by Evan Mobley and company down low when he normally dunks those balls or he normally finishes those shots. Um, I think the Cavs are challenging Julius Randle to play one-on-one. -on -one. They're not bringing double teams against him. And Julius Randle really deferred tonight, didn't look to take the shots when they were there. And with no R.J. Barrett in the lineup, someone needed to step up and score. And unfortunately, the Knicks couldn't get enough offense on the offensive end of the floor. And see what Wally did there is he knew all the questions we were going to ask him or talk to him about every topic we wanted to bring up. See you later, Wally. Each Thanks for one joining of us. So well done there. <laughs> Took all the air out of it. But no, but you as a player, it's something I said right at the top and you as a player can relate to this is the, the difficulty of having a back-to-back -back same team without a break in between just played last night play again the next night I understand the schedule is what it is you got to play it but there is a bit of a challenge to that because neither I mean this wasn't a really good looking basketball game at all until the very end when it did get exciting because of course the, the score was close but you know the there's a schedule thing here with these two games Wally that for players this isn't easy to do back to back like this. Well as you can see there's a lot of pride in that Cleveland Cavalier locker room. They started the season one and three really struggling with injuries. They were not going to lose this game even though it was on the road even though they got their butts kicked in the second half at home last night. 
That's what competitors do. I mean, they don't just lay down and let the Knicks sweep the first two games of a home and home, you know, a back to back season series. This is a team that was the four seed in the East. They have all stars over there in that locker room and they have a lot of pride and they came in there and they showed that they were going to outwork and outcompete the Knicks tonight and that's something that Tom Thibodeau and the Knicks are going to have to take to heart because they had an opportunity tonight if they would have played a little bit better basketball to uh, you know kind of put the Cavaliers a little bit in their rearview mirror. Now both teams are two and three both teams off to a rocky start to start this season. Knicks are staring at the Milwaukee Bucks right now on Friday so they have some soul searching to do. I mean obviously it's a long season but this was an alarming game and the way the Knicks are shooting the basketball especially Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson again 11 for 38 those two combined from the floor. Knicks aren't going to win too many games unless those two guys start making shots. Wally Jared Allen Darius Garland again missed the game for the Cavs but Karis LeVert who did not play last night got to mention him he was key tonight 19 points and after Mitchell had the sequence of scoring five points LeVert hit a dagger three and that was basically the ball game absolutely a difference maker when he's in the lineup when you account for Donovan Mitchell you double him and you get the ball out of his, his hands you got Karis LeVert on the other side who can absolutely create knock down three point shots get to the rim finish make his free throws and he's also a long defender that gave the Knicks a lot of trouble on that perimeter when they wanted to go one on one. This Cavs team is pretty good. You can see why George Niang was added in the offseason. He competed with Julius Randle. He guarded him one on one and he gave him all he could handle. Max Struess also is a winner. He knows how to compete. He comes from that Miami Heat DNA. You know he got his butt kicked last night didn't shoot the ball well last night but he came in tonight played some pretty good defense and they made a statement against the Knicks. They sent a message that we're still here. We're still a team to reckon with in the East. That was a big time win for the Cavs. All right Wally as always we appreciate it. We'll see you on Friday night. You got it boys. Can't wait. All right Donovan Mitchell really uh, uh, the other night last night 20 points first half six points second half tonight 23 points first half doesn't score until two minutes left in the in the game. That's just a, an amazing scenario when you compare what he's done the last two games here in the first half compared to what he's done in the second two quarters. And again I always go back to it's what star players do is when it matters most that's when they make the buckets. But he like in the first game last night it's the same thing tonight is he tried to get his team going offensively early in the game as you said with the 23 in the first half just get himself into rhythm and make shots and he was knocking down three pointers early which to me three pointers were a premium tonight there was nobody making threes on either team but he was able to knock five of them down and that's a or six of them actually in the game including the big one late and this follow too on his own shot to put it back and that was such a huge play there because even if you get a stop for the Knicks there still is a chance despite that three he hit. But he gets that and you could just feel the air come out of the, the building. And then of course he finds Karis Levert for what ended up being the dagger. But this is what star players do. And as Wally said, this is a Cavs team that they had to win this game. One in four was not an option for them. Losing both games of a home and home back to back to the Knicks could not be an option for this team. No excuses with who's not in the lineup. So they did all they could to win this game. Whatever it took, as ugly as it was, they got it done. So it's a beautiful win in Cleveland ugly loss here in New York. R.J. Barrett sore left knee. They hope to have him back Friday night against Milwaukee but the way this has been going you can make the case that R.J. has been the Knicks best player. You got Brunson struggling and yeah. Randall struggling. It really missed R.J. Barrett. He's playing great basketball through four games unable to go tonight. And you know where they missed him too is they got to the free throw line 30 times in this game. So it's not as if they weren't getting the fouls that he can get but he's really good at getting into the heart of the defense and drawing contact and getting to the foul line finishing and just when they need a bucket because they're not getting into the flow he finds a way. That's the one thing about Barrett as a scorer he always can find a way to get buckets and he seems to do well against this Cavs team. So you certainly missed him. But there was still opportunity and there were still plenty of players that could have contributed in this game. Dante DiVincenzo, 5 of 10, he gave you 16 off the bench. Quickly as well, 7 of 16, really missed his three of his threes, but everything from two, he was fantastic. And he had 18. It's, as Wally mentioned, Julius Randle at 3 for 15, 0 for 6 from downtown. And you can see it, it has been a struggle. He has gotten to a double-double in his first four games, somehow, some way. But in this game, you could see it. In a back-to-back -back situation, the legs were not there. 